All right, in our uh, last video here, I, I wanted to really show how you can swap these out. Uh, if you ever have a connection problem, you have to replace it, or if you decide that you want to go from the USB to the Ethernet one, or, or the other way around, um, I wanted to show that process uh, of, of connecting. Plus, I don't think we've done a video on the USB connection one, so I've taken out the, um, the configuration or the Ethernet slide. You can look down the middle there, right? I've taken that out. I'm going to replace it now with the USB one. And again, the way that you find out which one's which is you look there and we'll tell you if it's a USB or Ethernet one. Then line things up and uh, it doesn't really snap in. You have to actually use these screws to to hold it in place. Um, and I will, you know, if you do screw it up and drop it down on the electronics, just pull the whole slide out. Right. And so when we're done with this, we're going to use a completely different um, power slide. Remember, we don't use the power over Ethernet brick. That's not required. Now we have a, a, a power supply brick that's going to go to the wall power. And we have this Y cable, right, that uh, is going to connect from here. And then the power will go into here. And as we plug it into the PC, we'll see a USB um, driver that is part of the software install that driver will then recognize this hardware connection as a USB to uh, Ethernet actually um, adapter and that's what this this driver can conflict with some other software I've seen specifically there's um, if you're doing laser markers the laser software from Epilogue has been known to cause some issues um, you can't really blame one company or the other. It's just that they're just the way that, you know, their drivers can, can conflict here. So, sorry, this is a proto piece and the, the, this is never really fit as well as it could be on the production unit. All right, same deal. The USB one has a Cal card, has the main unit, has the slide already put in. You buy these from ID integration. We actually attach the cables for you as well. So just pull it out of the box and get ready to go. Okay, but we're going to start by connecting our power, right? Remember, it takes about 45 seconds for it to actually power up and go beep. And we don't plug in the USB cable until that has happened. All right, so just to kind of keep things from uh, getting confused in the Windows world. All right, so uh, the process of installing the software before you plug in the, the USB cable. That's really just a USB thing. Uh, if you get the Ethernet one, you can connect the, um, the verifier to your network even before you install the Cognex software. But for the USB one, you have to have the software installed first because that software installation includes the driver that's gonna recognize this connection. Now, I plug it in and Windows will recognize it apply a driver and now I can install my Cognex software or not install but rather run it I previously installed it and you'll see it's a little bit different um, in that it's still going to give it an IP address hey that was a USB connection right why is it calling it a, um, an IP address well again the driver is it's kind of it's kind of weird if you go down here to devices um, you'll go to device manager and you'll be able to see this. I believe here it's this one LAN 7500 USB 2 to Ethernet adapter that is the Cognex driver and that can cause some issues again um, compatibility if you have another device that's using something similar if you have um, if you have a laptop that doesn't have an Ethernet port um, you can put in a USB to Ethernet adapter, and that might conflict with this Cognex driver. So the, the, the weirdness about it is that you the software will see it as an IP address, but notice the IP address. It's 169.254, which is an internal IP address. It's not really visible on your, uh, on your network. And so there might be some um, security rules that have been employed by your network administrator for devices that come up as 169254. It might be blocked. There's all kinds of strange things that might happen because of this 
USB connected version. This is again why we recommend the Ethernet one over the USB one, but you know, in theory, they can they can both work. And to prove that, uh, we've got a connection here, right? I can do the exact same thing I did before about update firmware. I can click this. I can go find the firmware file. I can you know, can send it down the to this device. I can do the exact same things as I did with the Ethernet connected one, including just start it up by double clicking. It'll go into the verifier. And now I can um, take a mark. You know, see if I can find something else that's got a decent. Here, I'll take a dot peen one. Here's a dot peen mark. Um, and we'll change this up here to say dot peen. E UID aim DPM is all the same still. We get on the top of that. And here's a case where that's what it looks like in 90. That's what it looks like in 45. You can see that's going to probably be problematic. And uh, you can look at 30. Maybe it gets a little bit better there, but it's kind of hard to say. 90 in this case probably works better. So uh, hit verify, and let's just see what happens. There we go. I got a passing grade, and it got created automatically to a report. So again, this is the USB version. The Ethernet and the USB version use the same software. The results are the same. There's nothing different. It's just about convenience of um, connectivity. If you don't have an Ethernet connection nearby, uh, or if you're working in the field, obviously the USB one is the one that you want to use. But for most customers, we're currently recommending the Ethernet uh, version of the Dataman verifier.